Greg's legacies are multiple, but I think the most important part about Greg Wolf, he gave us confidence. He gave us confidence to dream big, to reach high, and, and not to be apologetic for that. Greg's uh, arrival at FIU uh, basically symbolized the arrival of adult supervision. The supervision in the sense of a larger vision for the institution on one hand, a larger belief in the life of the mind on the other, and a can-do uh, approach that we earnestly at that point needed. There was a tremendous need both seen in terms of our students and the faculty and the community to become a four-year institution. And Greg added that trunk to the university. But we had to battle both the Board of Regents and a university system that didn't want to see much expansion. We celebrate the milestone of being a four-year public university. And sometimes we say it so fast, we're a four-year public university, but I remember what it took to be a four-year public university. A lot of meetings, and I remember one meeting at his home, it was a breakfast meeting, and all the key players were there. The superintendent of schools, the president of Miami-Dade, uh, Jack Gordon, the city of Miami, the mayor, I mean, everybody at the table. And he started by saying, you know, we all have our responsibilities and we all have our interests, but there's one thing we all have in common, and that is our vision and our goal to make Miami a vibrant city. But let me tell you, colleagues, that Miami cannot become a major city unless it has a four-year public university. It came the day we had the first class, first class on the steps of Primera Casa at uh, Miami, and the students gathered and balloons were released, but more than that, it was a, the establishment of a whole new opportunity at the highest level of quality in the state, and we were pace setters. We've been pace setters in other things, and we'll continue to be, but they're fundamentally the dedication to our commitment to the highest quality education, the best possible service in the community, and building those bridges to the world that are part of the original charter. He was committed to graduate education. He also wanted to build the Biscayne Bay campus. He saw the logic of that. And he also was willing to stand up to the Board of Regents. A lot of the younger faculty, uh, me included, felt that the Board of Regents really did not have an understanding of our Miami community, of our demographics, of our challenges, of our opportunities. And Greg uh, was willing to tilt at those windmills. What I most admired about Greg Wolf was a sense that the university had to be complete and in that was an international vision. We're sitting here at the Stephen Green School of International and Public Affairs and it was Greg who put the eye in Florida International University. We knew that he was, had a, a degree of sophistication that was new to uh, our community because of his prior experience as a college president on one hand, because of his international experience as a diplomat on the other, largely in Central America. Now this was a period of intensive conflict uh, in Miami. A lot of migrants pouring in from Central America, but at the same time, the Mario boat lift, the Haitian boat lift, and here we were, this young university, trying to figure this out. Who better but Greg to deal with that? And we made important steps forward. We started the freshman class, we got the comprehensive university presence for our graduate programs, and there was Greg driving that process. We were transforming the university, but what he noticed was that the community wasn't embracing FIU. The community didn't know FIU. And he said, you know, I have my contacts, and let's bring speakers that the community would come to the university. And we did that. I mean, we brought the Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, Madame Sadat from Egypt. Um, we brought Beverly Seals, the opera singer. 
uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and of course, the beautiful moment when it started raining and he got the umbrella and just went out there and pretty much even looked like he was singing with her. I mean, beautiful. So he brought luminary after luminary to campus, something I had never seen since I joined the faculty in 1976. In the community, there was an outreach. People came on our board of uh, directors at the time who had never been involved with FIU at all. That outreach was uh, critical. I have many wonderful memories of President Wolf, but this was in the early 80s. I believe he had been in his presidency perhaps two years. I was a faculty member in the College of Education, and one day my phone rang. I answered, I said, Barbara Bader, and the voice at the other end, much to my surprise, said, Greg Wolf. He invited me to lunch for the following week. He didn't tell me the agenda. And as we were walking across campus to the cafeteria, he stopped to speak to the gentleman who was cutting the lawn. And in Spanish, they had a brief conversation. And as we walked away, he explained to me that the gentleman's son had been very ill and he was inquiring as to how his son was. We continued our walk to the cafeteria and the woman behind the counter serving our food greeted the president and he in turn had a long conversation with her. He explained to me that her husband had had major surgery and he was asking if there was anything he could do to help her. I think that day will be in my memory, will be etched in my memory forever. And it speaks to the humane type of person uh, Gregory Wolf was. Gregory Wolf was a unique man. I didn't know him until I met him at the university. And he had such a wonderful way. I don't know how many people were in a room with us. You were always the only person in the room. When you were talking with Greg, there was nobody else around. He made you feel so important. And he did that with everybody. He loved people. Didn't matter if they were the President of the United States who visited us or if they were the janitor. He loved people. In, in Greg, we were getting an accomplished diplomat, but we didn't realize as well that we were getting an amb a second uh, ambassador, if you will, Marianne Wolf. Marianne Wolf clearly loved mixing it up with students and with faculty. She clearly was excited about the idea of this new university that was on the verge of, of greatness. To Gregory, Marianne was the world. The university was second to Marianne. And Marianne was a delight. She was intelligent, she was bright, she had plans also. Marianne was just so supportive of him. And, uh, and I asked him what time, what is it that attracted you to Marianne? And he said, well, I met her in a competition, speaking competition, and he, she won the competition. And I said, you know what? I needed someone like that. Without Greg Wolf, we would not be the university that we are today. There was a vision that challenged everything. I believe President Wolf's legacy might be he was truly a man of the people. He was the one that inspired us. He was the one that would tell us we're not gonna give up. We're gonna fight, we're gonna continue. I think the most important thing you can give your children and the most important thing you can give your colleagues, perhaps in a climate of a relationship like we've had, are memories. I hope that I've left, or will have left, some memories on which growth and happiness, better understanding can be based. There's today an acceptance of this as being a major state university. And that's no longer a vision, that's a fact.